Hi, it's The Wire. It's October 12th, 2024. This is the post fight for Arthur Baturbiev's uh, announced victory over Dmitry Bevel. Let's talk about it, but first remember the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me uh, just say a few things. Um, I watch the ESPN Plus feed, right? Um, I'm still in a bit of shock. During the telecast, as I watched the fight, I was surprised how much Bernardo Suna and Tim Bradley were praising Arthur Baturbiev in a fight I thought Dimitri Bevel was winning. But at the end of the fight, after 12 rounds, both of them thought that Bevel had won the fight. Osuna, who actually picked Baturbiev to win the fight before the fight, said that it was Bevel who fought how he wanted to fight for the majority of the fight. Right? Understand, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say here. Let's just talk about why I thought Bevel won the fight. People can debate this in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Uh, just looking at my notes, I'll hold them up here. If I know which, well, whatever. It looks like my background uh, app is uh, not giving me that opportunity. In the first round, I don't believe Arthur Baturbiev throws a right hand for the first two minutes of the round. Right, folks, the first round is clearly a Bevel round. Let me say this, too. Um, the second round, in my notes, I wrote, Dimitri Bevel, jab can't miss. The first two rounds are really Bevel shooting a jab completely confusing Arthur Baturbiev. I thought Baturbiev was having problems closing distance early in the fight. Now let me say the third round is close. I actually ranked the third round as a 10-10. It could have been a 10-9 for Baturbiev. But the first 25% of the fight, I thought Baturbiev looked great. Then we get to the middle of the fight. And understand, on the ESPN Plus telecast here in the United States, and if you watch the same telecast as I did, please weigh in in the comment section. Tim Bradley started faulting Bevel for trying to walk down a puncher. Right, Bradley repeatedly says that Bevel is drawing a line in the sand. He says this several rounds. Right, in some, Bevel, who was viewed as the superior boxer coming into the fight, was actually throwing big punches, was actually aggressive. This was not a fight of a heavy puncher chasing a back foot guy. Now this is a fight where the back foot guy starts strong, is landing a jab. And then when we get to the middle rounds, he's standing his ground. And he's landing some beautiful, I mean beautiful, combinations. So understand the bet I had structured. It impacted how I was watching the fight. Once we get past the eighth round, my knockout props fell off. So I needed the fight to go the distance at that point. And I needed Dimitri Bevel to win the fight. So, as you can imagine, I was extremely pleased with the middle of the fight. I thought Bevel was clearly winning the fight. Now, this is not to say that Baturbiev didn't figure things out. 
In my opinion, the big moment in this fight, from the Baturbiev side of the play, is when Baturbiev, who could not land a chopping right hand, folks, he couldn't, the wounds to Beevil's face are actually caused by Beevil's guard hitting his face as he blocked the shots. Defensively, there's no comparison in this fight. Understand, too, many of you are talking about Peturbiev's body work. Folks, look at the compu box. They landed the same amount of body shots. Now, the big moment for Peturbiev in this fight came when he discovered a short uppercut. Right now, he stings. He stings Beevil with it several times. But understand, that's because the rest of his game was defended against. So he then starts having success with an uppercut. But understand, it wasn't enough to win the middle part of the fight. It just simply wasn't. So then we get to the last third of the fight, the last four rounds, and they're showing you on the telecast the live betting spread, right? Understand, by the time you got to the last third of the fight, the gamblers out there, ESPN bet, right? I was watching ESPN Plus. They were showing you live betting on ESPN bet. While the fight at one point leveled to a minus 115, minus 115, when it looked like, let's say, in the seventh or eighth round, Baturbiev may have hurt Beevil, and you thought there was a possibility that Baturbiev might be able to drop Beevil to the canvas. Understand, the point spread live, and you can't make this up. Right, this is how the public, at least the gambling public, the ones laying bets, saw the fight. Beevil jumps to a minus 180. Folks, that's that's two thirds into the fight. Beevil's far ahead. So then you get the suspense of the last four rounds. Because Batarbiev came into this fight with a 100% KO ratio. So, now I wasn't watching the zone for this one, right? Um, the zone, excellent team. I had to pick one. I picked ESPN Plus. That happened to be on my TV as I worked the remote, right? Chris Mannix, in the post fight interview, is questioning Baturbiev. And he says to Baturbiev, what did you think before the start of the 10th round when your corner said to you, you need a knockout to win the fight? Well, understand, folks, Beevil looked good to me. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Beevil looked good to me in the last four rounds. I thought Beevil clearly wins the 12th round. Right, this is in a fight where, in my opinion, he's winning the fight. Right, by the start of the ninth round, you're thinking, okay, all Beevil has to do here to win this fight is continue being Beevil. He can't hit the canvas. We don't want any 10 8 rounds. Well, he doesn't hit the canvas. He has bursts in rounds where he lands three, four punch combinations, heavy shots. Understand, he's been high-end the entire fight. Their sequence is where Baturbiev is all prepared for Beevil's jab, and Beevil leads with a straight right hand. There are other sequences where Beevil is throwing left hooks to Baturbiev's body. Now think about how that lines up. That means as Beevil is defenseless, on the left side of his body, right? He's throwing a hook to Baturbiev's body. Baturbiev's big right hand is actually free to hit Beevil in the side of the head. In other words, Beevil in the later rounds has 
crack Baturbiev's code. He's taking risks that you would only take when you figured out your opponent's punch pattern. So when I was hearing the scoring, they said 114-114, and I thought, man, you got to be kidding me. My first thought was, they better not call this a draw. Right? We better not get some other judge scoring this fight a draw. Right? Then they announced it was Michael Buffer. Then he announced the next two cards. The minute he said a card that had a 116 on it, I thought, well, Bevel must have won this fight. Because there simply is no way. <laughs> there is no way that Arthur Perturbiev could win this fight by four rounds. Especially not after Bevel, to me, does better the first four rounds, then does better the next four. Right? There, there is simply no way someone can look at the fight and feel that Baturbiev won the fight by four rounds. Right? Understand, they're close in terms of number of punches landed. I know the Baturbiev crowd will say, hey, well, our guy landed more power shots. Right? But just understand, as Bernardo Sunis said, as soon as the fight ended, before the scorecards were announced, it looked like Bevel was the one doing what he wanted to do. Right? So, I'm shocked by the scoring. Right? I thought defensively, just looking at punch efficiency, I thought defensively, Bevel had a clear edge. I thought in terms of efficiency, folks, it's Bevel who's landing. More than 30% of his punches. Bevel's punch stat numbers are actually in line with a typical Bevel performance. The punch stat numbers that are subdued are actually Baturbiev's punch stat numbers. And while Baturbiev can box. I'm not here to say that he can't box. He, he can box. He wasn't that much of a force to Bevel's body. And his inefficiency, the fact that he continually threw punches that did not land flush, hurt him. He looked desperate to me. Well, it hurt him in my eyes. I wasn't the judge. <laughs> they had these three guys. I'm still mystified how Bevel could fight this performance, which is a great performance. A great performance. And not win a single judge's scorecard. It's baffling to me. So let me just say this. If I'm Arthur Perturbiev, and understand, after a fight... If they stick a mic in your face and you're in front of a live crowd and, um, you know, you're not able to talk with your manager uh, about future fights in the moment, when they say, hey, are you going to fight this guy again? We'd like to see it again. Of course, after a fight like this, where at the end of the fight, the Beevil corner is grabbing their guy, everyone's happy. In the Baturbi of corner, it looked like these guys had just left a funeral. Right? There was not a lot of joy in the Baturbiev corner. Right? So, if I'm Arthur Baturbiev, I don't fight Bevel in a rematch. I already have his name on my resume. But nobody can say that I dodged him. The fight took place in a neutral location. Nobody can say I had home cooking, right? The scoring seems off to me, but it was an international panel of judges. No one can claim that I had the crowd on my side and, you know, my local judges enabled me to defend my titles and pick up the other fighter's title, right? So if I'm Baturbiev, and I understand they're throwing a lot of money around, I'm not here to say they're not throwing a lot of money around. 
right? Riyadh season, I get the feeling a lot of these boxers are very pleased to get the paydays. But if I'm Arthur Beterbiev, he's late 30s, folks. He's almost 40. I know in my heart I lost this fight. At a minimum, at a minimum, I know in my heart I was pushed to go the distance for the first time in my career. At a minimum. I know I threw a lot of punches and did not come close to landing many of them flush. The other guy was more efficient. At a minimum, he knows it took him several rounds to figure out how to dodge Dimitri Bevel's jab. So if I'm him, no, I don't take the rematch. Understand, Benavides is about to fight Morel, right? Understand, Baturbi have had surgery five months ago. Right? It's only in boxing where they tell you that surgery to repair a torn meniscus has the leg in perfect condition just a few months later. Right, He made it through this fight. But if I'm him, I rest. I'm now undisputed. The public will understand that I pushed it to be undisputed. Right, Fought just a few months after surgery against one of the best movers in boxing, right? A boxing virtuoso who gave a virtuoso performance. So if I'm him, I wait until there's a winner for Benavides Morel. Then I step out of the shadows, right? I make deals with my sanctioning body so they don't strip me. You and I know the way boxing is. You can fight a beevil and then get stripped, right? I do whatever it takes to fight the winner of Benavides Morale. You and I know that's big money. That's huge money. If I'm Bevel, understand, he was magnificent today, but he's 33 years old. Right? You could be a great mover when you're younger. You start to feel your 30s, a few years into your 30s. Isn't that what's happening right now? with Tyson Fury's legs, right? If I'm evil, I'm not sure if I continue to fight regular fights for ranking purposes, if I don't get a rematch with Beterbiev, right? I'm not sure if I continue boxing on a regular basis. I might take the viewpoint of, okay, I'm going to stay in tip-top condition. The world knows who I am. I just got paid handsomely. Right? If Paterbiev gives me the rematch, okay, great. I'll take it. Me personally, I would even question that. Because I believe there's going to be at least 45% of the public 45% of the public that feels that Bevo won this fight. Right? This fight really is a Hagler-Leonard situation where today over 40% of the public, I'm sure, believes Hagler won that fight. Right? If I were Bevo, I might even follow the Hagler example. Never fight again. Right? If I don't get the exact fight I want in the location I want, I might just say, hey, my last fight went the distance against a guy who had a 100% KO ratio, and I can look magnanimous in retirement. People ask me about the fight, I can just say, look, you know, the judges rule that he won the fight knowing that the person asking me the question is fully aware that as much as the public thinks I want to fight, as thinks the other guy want to fight, right? Let me just say, too, I personally think that most people believe that Dimitri Bevel won this fight. This is without talking to anybody. This is just watching the fight. You know, hearing the 116 scorecard and thinking, oh, okay, well, this is Beevil's, only to hear that 
none of the judges gave him the fight. If I'm evil, I would seriously consider retirement or consider taking my name out of regular contention and just waiting for that cherry pick fight that everyone wants to see. Let's say Benavides beats Morel and then beats Arthur Beterbiev, who of course is more than 10 years older than Benavides. If I'm evil, at that point I might say, hey David, give me a shot at the title. Uh, there are many people out there who feel that I should have been the undisputed champion, that I won the match for the undisputed title, and that they ripped me off, right? Roy Jones had that glow for several years after he got ripped off at the Olympics, right? The 88 Olympics in Seoul, Korea, right? I'm just telling you, Bevo, and I know life's unfair. I'm not saying it's fair. But I'm just telling you, if Bevo walks in a room right now, there are going to be a lot of people in that room who are going to look at him, and he has no titles right now. And they're going to think to themselves, that's the real champion. Right, folks? Few things in life are more powerful than that. Right? Think Ali. In the late 60s, they stripped him. Uh, an Olympic gold medalist becomes heavyweight champion. His buddy, Joe Fraser. Right, but there was a crowd out there that felt that whatever Joe did, Ali was the real champion. Understand, in my opinion, based on what I saw, that's my feeling right now about Dimitri Bevel. Those are my thoughts. I thought the jab, just in terms of punching, I thought the jab for Bevel was magnificent the first three rounds. I thought the short uppercut by Baturbiev was really uh, an excellent punch by him. Uh, I'm going to disagree with Tim Bradley. I thought uh, Bevel drawing a line in the sand and uh, throwing great combinations in the middle of the ring was uh, breathtaking. I thought uh, Baturbiev figuring out that he needed to let Bevel throw punches before he fired back was uh, excellent. I thought Baturbiev looked anxious in the later rounds and was moving his feet a lot to try to corner Bevel and I thought that reeked of desperation. That just highlighted the fact that Paterbiev understood that he needed those late rounds. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also congratulate the sizable amount of my subscribers who picked Paterbiev in this fight. You guys got it right. Um, I'm over at the side of the ring, dazed and confused by the scorecards. Um, I congratulate the winners. Thanks for stopping by.